Large intestine is a part of the alimentary canal and is a continuation of small intestine, specifically of ileum. It consists of several parts, cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, and rectum. Wall structure of the large intestine is basically the same as in the small intestine, but there are some differences. Its wall doesn't form permanent folds, plaque circularis, which are clearly visible in the small intestine. Nevertheless, as a result of a contraction of muscular layer, inner part of the large intestine can be folded, but it's not a permanent state. The second important difference from the small intestine is the absence of villi. Thus, the inner surface of the large intestine is smooth. The main structure of the wall is mucosa, submucosa, muscularis, and serosa. Mucosa comprises three parts, an epithelial lining, an underlying lamina propria, and muscularis mucosi. The epithelial lining is a simple columnar epithelium with enterocytes, goblet cells, and enteroendocrine cells. The most numerous cells are enterocytes, that are also called absorptive cells which create a striated or brush border on their apex. We may also call them colonocytes in this segment of the gastrointestinal tract. There are microvilli on their apex, which are arranged in a layer and are covered by glycocalyx. Glycocalyx contains enzymes such as disaccharidases, enteropeptidases, aminopeptidases and alkaline phosphatases. These are products of colonocytes, which, after translation, are integrated into the membrane as integral membrane proteins. Lamina propria is a layer of loose connective tissue. There is an abundance of cells in this layer. Not only fibroblasts and other connective tissue-related cells, but also lymphocytes. From time to time, we can see lymphatic nodules, which even reach submucosa. Presence of lymphocytes is a reaction to a great number of bacteria, which are present within the large intestine. Intestinal crypts, also called crypts of Lieberkin, are embedded in lamina propria. They are simple tubular glands, also covered by epithelium, which is continuous with the epithelium of the intestine. There are enterocytes, goblet cells, enteroendocrine cells in the glands, but as opposed to the epithelial lining of the lumen, also stem cells and scattered pennant cells. Goblet cells are rather common in the large intestine, and they get even more numerous as the large intestine reaches its last segment, rectum. These cells secrete mucus, which serves as a protective layer of the mucosa. Enteroendocrine cells belong to the neuroendocrine system. These cells produce polypeptide hormones, which influence motility and secretion of the intestine. Pennet cells, in comparison to small intestine, are less numerous. They even cannot be distinguished in this section, but we described them in the video about duodenum, so check that out. Stem cells with light active nucleus give rise to all aforementioned cell types. The third layer of the mucosa is muscularis mucosi. Muscularis mucosi is made up of smooth muscle cells. The next layer, which is located under the mucosa, is called submucosa. Submucosa is made of loose connective tissue, just like lamina propria, but there's a difference. Loose connective tissue of submucosa contains less cells. On the other hand, it has thicker collagen fibers. There are bigger vessels also. One structure that is rather important to remember is that it contains a nerve plexus called submucosal or Meissner's plexus. 
This plexus is controlled by the autonomous nerve system, both sympathetic and parasympathetic, and plays a role in regulation of blood flow to the submucosa and mucosa, contractions of muscularis mucosae, and in secretion of various substances. We can see some ganglionic neurons here. Next layer under the submucosa is the muscularis. Muscularis is composed of smooth muscle cells that divide into two sublayers. There is a clearly visible myenteric or Auerbach's nerve plexus between these sublayers. It is responsible for rhythmic contractions of the intestine. In comparison to the submucosal or Meissner's plexus, it controls larger areas of the bowel. In the internal sublayer of muscularis, which is thicker, the orientation of cells is circular, as opposed to the external sublayer, which is mostly longitudinal. The smooth muscle cells of the external longitudinal layer are in a transverse section, which means that the whole section was performed transversely. Smooth muscle cells of the external layer create three longitudinal bands called tinei coli. We can see them in the section as a thickening of the layer. And there is an artificial cut. Intraperitoneal organs, which basically means they are within the abdominal cavity, are covered with serosa. Serosa is made of a loose connective tissue and is covered by simple squamous epithelium, mesothelium. Not entire large intestine is located into a peritoneale. There are parts where the large intestine is located retroperitoneally. These parts are covered by adventitia. For instance, ascending and descending colon is a secondary retroperitoneal organ. It basically means that at first it was located within the peritoneal cavity, but as the intrauterine development continued, it involved a rotation of many structures and was subsequently pulled into the retroperitoneum, while its surface fused with the parietal peritoneum.